Shalom, shalom, you guys. Hold on, let me get this set. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan, the Code Searcher, and that's one of my favorites by James Block. You know, that's written, that's about you and me uh, in the end times. It's a prophecy about Israel, not the state of Israel, the people, the ones that are wet, they're waking up. Eventually, he's going to take us back to the land. Shalom, yeah, you guys. Uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of um, go over some stuff that I'm seeing, and I'm, I'm. It's like I want to pull my hair out. Oh well, I burned myself the other day keeping bees with my smoker. I didn't realize that. Anyway, I was just over on Facebook, you guys, and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to stir the pot or anything, um, but I'm going to take this as a as a teaching moment, okay? Um, you guys, I love Tanya and Nick, and uh, I appreciate what, what they do in each of you. Um, I know you guys are doing your best to, to try to keep you was feast and you, you're doing a great job. And it's, you know, cognitive dissonance is, uh, the wicked sister of confusion. And so, you know, we were, we were taught things indoctrinated with things we inherited some traditions of men and some sometimes we don't know any better okay i just wanted to take a couple of ganders and a few comments here and just kind of um you know clear up some of this confusion because this is a really important time you guys and i'm talking about shavo not pentecost you guys if you can see that they obscured and hid the father's name and the son's name why is it so hard to believe that they also obscured? And I do believe it started with, with Judah and you who allowed it. Obscured this day called Shavuot. It all started with Constantine and with his edict forbidding the Jews to keep the, the, the Shabbat the way they had been. They had to come up, come with a standardized calendar. This was under duress with to Hillel too. Okay. They can no longer count the weeks. And so what do they start doing? And guys, this was after Yeshua. Yeshua never counted omers, ever. And neither did the disciples. This happened, this started in 321, 322, around that time with, with Hillel 2. Okay? Under duress, they fixed the calendar to Saturday. And this also did some things to the to the, um, the way they, they observe the feast, okay? That's historical fact. And what's really interesting about this is the father preserved, he preserved his day in the growth cycle a week. That's what he did. First of all, and this I appreciate this, brother. He, he says here, the priest's job was to count the owner and bring it to the temple. It was actually a sheep of barley. Without priests, the, te the, the temple... But most people who are not priests are playing a game of counting. What exactly? Nothing. This is ridiculous, right? So he's making a point, and his, and his heart is, is in the right place, but he's also wrong. <laughs> First of all, Shavuot has nothing to do with barley. If you go read what Shavuot's about, we're supposed to bring some flour. And, and, and notice... These are all byproducts of harvest. So before you can bring any of these things to Yahuwah as a sacrifice, there first has to be a wheat uh, field somewhere that's in the, it's in the first fruit stages of, of harvest. And that's what Shavuot is. Just like a bee, and with the feast uh, at that time, Passover, Passover is happening at a barley harvest. And what you are bringing at the barley harvest is sheaves to weigh. So he's confusing those two, first of all. For Shavuot, we're not supposed to bring sheaves. We're supposed to bring fine flour and two baked loaves. And we, loaves, loaves, L-O-A-V-E-S, <laughs> loaves of bread, which has to be baked. How do you get it to that point? Well, first you got to harvest some some wheat. You got to thresh it. Then you got to mill it. Then you got to 
turn it into some dough and bake it, right? That's how you get from point A to point B. We're not waving barley. We're waving loaves of bread after the first fruits of the harvest. So the first fruits of a bean are the sheaves. That's the first fruits. And then the barley harvest runs up into the beginning of the wheat harvest. So, so some of the stuff that you guys are seeing that's being harvested at Pentecost time is actually barley. And this is probably where some of this confusion comes in. And people have this disconnect of what yeast is what. <laughs> but Shavu designates the beginning of the wheat harvest. And it runs all summer long. Concluding, get this, with another feast, Sh uh, Sukkot. At Sukkot time, the wheat has been totally harvested. Sukkot is actually a celebration of the last harvest of the year. This harvest, and with the barley prior, uh, before, all of that together is what gets you through the winter for the next year, for the next cycle, okay? So Shavuot is the beginning of the wheat harvest. Therefore, there has to be some wheat in the field that can be harvested and made into two loaves. But then it runs all summer long because it's a summer grain. The Bible is very clear. This is not something that's harvested in the spring. Okay? So people are, are celebrating Pentecost right now. And I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm suggesting to you under great conviction that this was something that the early Christians, and I'm talking about Rome, inserted into the text. And what I mean by that is you don't find the word Pentecost anywhere in, except in Acts 2. And it implies that the, the, the people at that time was keeping some feast called Pentecost, and they were not. They were keeping Leviticus 23. And if you look at that count, it is 102 days. It's not just 50 days, you guys. And I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, in a couple of years, this is going to be well known. <laughs> I'm determined that this truth is going to be known by everybody. Because this day is important. This is the day that the Spirit was poured out in, in, in the upper room. The text does not say 10 days later. It says when it was fully come. Okay. Shavuot is 102 days, and that puts it, for those that are, that are looking, okay, go ahead and celebrate your Pentecost, but just know the real day is July 17th, which is a new moon. That's 102 days from the exact day they tell you to count in Leviticus 23. Got it. Guys, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I'm telling you the, the, the heaven's truth. That's what the text says. That's where it brings you on the calendar. 102 days will bring you to July 17th, which is going to be a Monday. And it's a new moon. It's a hidden day. How ironic. <laughs> you allow the Jews to hide it, and it is a hidden day indeed. So I, 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 I appreciate the, the, the journey and the struggle that you guys, and here's my good friend Marty, who's saying, oh, she's so confused with all this counting. You're right, I, and I get that, Marty, and this is why I'm doing this, okay? Um, just know that this has nothing to do with barley. That's at Abib time. At Shavuot time, it's the beginning of the wheat harvest, and it runs all the way through Sukkot. Sukkot is the conclusion of the wheat harvest. The, the harvesting is done, and it's a celebration of, of that. Okay? He's bringing up, you know, this is a Kabbalistic ritual. He is exactly right. Counting the Omer comes from the Talmud, you guys. It is not in our text. And, and Exodus 16, where you first see the Shabbat and you see the work week, they are collecting manna, and it is a measurement. The Omer is a measurement. It's not counting a day. It's a measurement of manna. 
but it was turned into account. And I explained to you how that happened. So it is, in fact, a Kabbalist tradition from the Talmud. There's no getting around that, you guys. Okay? So he is correct on that point. Um, I just hate seeing all the, all the confusion here. Um, and I, again, I really appreciate the, the dialogue back and forth here. I just want to insert my two cents in this um, and, and try to help you guys see that there's something being missed here. And it's because there's a disconnect. We have lost connection with the agriculture and the whole thing that this this is this is why i say that this particular day the father preserved it in the growth cycle of wheat what does that mean it means you can't grow wheat and get two loaves in 50 days you guys and have it to wave it, it's not happening so please if, if anybody has anything to add on this please and, and for my friends that are uh, in areas that are growing wheat right now, please send to me on Facebook. Um, you know, this was sent to me three weeks ago. And this is this is uh, Oklahoma. And it's going to be like this all the way across the country. It's all going to be the same time. It was all planted the same time. Three weeks ago, this is what the wheat looked like. It just barely got head, heads on it. And it's still green as grass. It takes several weeks for the for the wheat to get ready. And this is an actual wheat field from last July. This was July 15th of this past year. And it look, it's a wheat field ready for harvest. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> and it's in July. The same thing's gonna happen this year, July. The, the wheat will be like this, right? So, you know, June, June-ish, there will be some wheat in the field that can be hand harvested and made into loaves. It's the first fruits. But it doesn't look like this um, until, you know, July. And this is ready for harvest. So, and it runs all summer. The, the, the summer wheat and the spring wheat both are planted in some, uh, excuse me, in winter and in spring. Both are harvested in the summer, early summer, late summer. All summer long, there's wheat harvest going on all around the world <laughs> in, in the Northern Hemisphere. And in the winter for us, meaning it's summer for Australia, right? Think about that. Argentina as well. January, uh, December, January, February is summer months in those areas. And that is when? That's when they harvest their wheat. It's a universal truth, you guys, no matter where you are. Okay. Shalom to you. May you who will bless you and keep you. Um, I hope this helps. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to get some more video out soon, you guys. I've been busy working with bees and trying to get something going uh, here. And um, I haven't been able to get on as much as I like. So just know I'm still here. Um, I'm still doing codes. Um, and yes, we're going to continue with the names. You guys, I haven't forgot you. I have not forgot you. So I will get back to that and, and uh, continue with getting names to the people. Um, I'm not going to um, abandon my commitment to you on that. So shalom. We'll see you in the next video.